This week's project is part of the 2015 Kitchen Utensil Build-Off Challenge. And there are over 30 content creators who are participating in this challenge, and their names are listed in the description below. For the challenge, I made a pair of salad tongs. This pair of salad tongs is made from one piece of wood, and it has a central pivoting point. This joint here is a modified knuckle joint, and has a retaining clip. It's spring-loaded for ease of use, and I've put an original carving onto it. So after all the hair pulling and the fun, I ended up with two of these. I'm going to keep this one for myself, and I put this one up on my Etsy shop. So let me show you how I made these. What I still need to do is, while this end is still attached, I am going to carve these areas here down so that it meets where I've sawed this thing apart. That joint is completely to that line. And to open this up, all I need to do is slice this down and saw this apart. I hope you can hear this.
I don't usually build prototypes when I go into a project, but for this one I actually built several prototypes. I built three. This is the first one. And from this I learned that the pins, they don't rotate very, this rotation is not very smooth at all. So in the next model, I learned that you have to drive this hole through here before you take the joint apart, at least on basswood, otherwise the thing tends to split. And the third model is really about this end, where how do I insert the spring so that it's sort of out of the way, and what kind of clasp you should look like, and how much force should the spring have, how wide should this be opened, that kind of things. But even before all those models, I actually designed this inside the computer, and before I designed it inside the computer, I designed this on paper. I did about nine different drawings, and two or three different models in the computer. But none of the designing in silico and on paper really gave me the dimensional feel that I got from actual scale size models. It also tells me how I should film this so that I don't really waste a lot of time setting up different shots I don't need. I hope you got a sense of the process that it takes to, at least for me, to create something. You know, despite all that work, it's actually very rewarding to design and make your own project, whatever it is. And you can start, up, start with maybe a piece that you see you like, but instead of downloading the plans, trying to figure it out, how to build it, how to make it so that it suits your style and your needs, is going to be more rewarding than, you know, just downloading a plan, having a cut list, you know, follow this line, do this, do that. It saves time, but it also doesn't, you know, stimulate the mind like the way you would if you designed it yourself. And it's hard, but it's going to be rewarding. So I hope next time, instead of using somebody else's plan, I hope you try to design your own or try to figure out how somebody else did it. A reverse engineering process is good for creativity and it's going to be good for your brain.